A very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to this week's first edition of the Evening Review. My name is Toivan Jabela, your host. Let's look at today's headlines. Tonight on the show, we are joined by a man who a decade ago was a, a rising star in politics, youth politics in particular, but he has since gotten off the political radar. We don't know where he disappeared to, but for some reason tonight, we traced him. That is uh, Nashiri Kathora Shirera. He was uh, the leader of the COD youth league for some years, for many years actually, uh, but the descendants of uh, COD seems to have also descended his political career, but let me not make that call. We'll speak to him and hear what he has to say himself. Nashi, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, and thanks for having me. Wonderful. Mm. I mean, you, you, you disappeared. You were this vibrant, articulate, uh, rising star in, in youth politics. Uh, of course, you were confined to COD, but uh, generally, even at a national level, you were, you know, perceived as a rising star generally. Um, and then you just disappeared uh, from the radar. Uh, I know you went to school, you d completed your law degree, and then, you know, you just, uh, you know, w w what happened uh, since then? Yeah, no, 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 you. Thanks, uh, thanks for the actual, thanks for the for the good words you are you are speaking to me, uh, I I did uh, I always believed that uh, politics uh, politics should never be perceived as a career. Uh, people get stuck in politics and uh, and they forget that uh, there's a life to live. But of course, for some of us, politics will always be in our, in, in my veins. It's there. Even if I'm not active in politics every day, I I do it. I, I comment on it. But then what happened is uh, when the most principal to a political movement in the country had an issue in 2007, <clears throat> uh, we had a congress in Kate Manswap. Yeah. And then uh, the, the party had the irreconcilable differences between very senior leaders on the one side and other very senior leaders on the other side mm. and, and that did not augur well for the party i'm a person who have always had the greatest deal of respect for ignatius Khomeini. he along of course with comrade venulenga and comrade uh, uh, shilling chase mentored me mm. into mainstream political arena but when my comrade shilling chase and, and, and Shwameni were on the one side and Comrade Ben was on the other side. Uh, I, I was almost caught in between, and I, and I took the principal decision to stick by the COT as a movement. And that meant sticking with the group that remained in leadership, and that is the group that was led by the legitimately elected president at the time, uh, which was Comrade Ben Uleng. Uh, but then uh, what kicked in also, is the, it manifested the realization, my always, my singular belief always that uh, uh, politics is not a career. Mm. At that time, I was just an activist all along. I, all I did for, I, I, I lived and breathed the COD because I believed as a nation we needed to, to put an end to what was clearly uh, uh, the wrong direction that the country was taking. Mm. But then I also needed to equip myself in the event uh, uh, that the COD after Kate Manswap Congress does not uh, get, get out and do well. Mm. Then I went to law school. I, I went to law school in 2008. I completed my first degree 
and then got the opportunity to continue serving the people of this country mm -hmm. uh, as, as, as counsel of the Directorate of Legal Aid. Uh, I've always been on the left, on the left divide of the Namibian politics. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's a deliberate decision by myself to be a friend of the poor, the marginalized, and the destitute. So when I got the opportunity to work for the Directorate of Legal Aid and continue serving uh, these people, the, the poor, those who cannot afford, it gives me a certain form of satisfaction that I at least could not, uh, I could not serve them at the highest echelon of the political level in the National Assembly after I have availed myself several times mm. to run for the National Assembly and the Namibian people rejected me through the ballot. I got so less and cons I was consoled by the fact that I'm still serving the poor, those who otherwise will not have hope. I'm not sure whether I have completely got, uh, got an out of politics, but for party politics for now, I'm out. I'm, I'm in the trade union movement. I'm a member of the Public Service Union of Namibia. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm its first, first vice president as we speak. So I'm in trade union politics now. I'm content there and I'm a civil servant and I'm very happy mm. as a civil servant serving, actually living a dream job of the ability to put a smile on and an, an a person who's been accused innocently, wrongly because of he, they don't have the man. That possibility of getting people free who otherwise will not have been free. Yeah. That that gives me satisfaction and a good night's sleep. So for now, politics, I don't know. But politics, I'm a political animal by nature, so mm. it might be that uh, I might I might come back to it one day or another. Uh, but I'm not sure. I'm also enjoying the courtroom a lot. <laughs> and I'm seeing myself as uh, uh, grooming myself and working towards being in the mold of advocate Baleka, advocate Zemenya, advocate Hinda. Mm. I forget Gauntlet, uh, yeah, Trengo. So I see myself in that road. It's easier, it's easier to become a good lawyer than to become a top politician because you, politician you decide you depend on the votes of the people. Sometimes they like you, sometimes they don't like you. Mm. I hear you. So, so yeah. Nashi, in, in that case, then um, you know because one of the most difficult things to do in this country is to make a political breakthrough if you're if you're a young person uh, as you were yeah. back then um did you feel at some stage that there was some sort of firewall around you that uh, you know sort of prevented you from really spreading your wings and eventually reaching whatever political aspirations that you had uh, just because you had elders and veterans in the party like the Shawamenis and the Ulengas? You know, the, 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 the Congress of Democrats was the home of the young people. And I believe that if it's uh, well reignited, it can always be the home of the young people. Uh, truth be told, uh, the Congress of Democrats had uh, very able leaders, the top leaders, you know, it was the creme de la creme uh, of, 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 of the people, people like ben, Comrade Ben, Comrade Tsudaguria, uh, Nora Shiming Chase, uh, Comrade uh, Ambassador Nora Shiming Chase, Honorable Shwameni. These people were the creme de la creme of Namibian politics. They were principled. You would want them in parliament. Mm -hmm. I was, I was given, uh, I, I managed to get into a political party where I was not related to anyone, where I had no friends, where, but where people believed in me because singularly because they they saw something in me and they, they decided to nurture it. It's very unlikely Namibian politics of the day, then and even now where tribalism is rife. I grew up in that party uh, without anybody from my tribe in the top, top leaders. The closest person that was close to being a herald he was Ambassador Shimin Case, and of course, Kaver Kaver. But then I was groomed by Comrade Ben, I was groomed by Comrade Chwameni, Comrade Kuriap. And, uh, you know, when I became leader of the Young Democrats, Secretary General of the Young Democrats, I was 22. Mm. So they took me in their wings, and I, I really had no qualms of wanting to get into Parliament tomorrow morning. I, 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 I felt the privilege. I felt the privilege of me being able to rub shoulders and learn from these great people. 
and it gave me immense pleasure that I could learn a lot from them. And it was, it was, it was a blessing that I will carry with me. Uh, it, it helped me a lot. It helped me in my studies. It helped me, it continues helping me in my everyday life, even in litigation, the ability to argue and to learn from somebody that I consider would have been a very good lawyer had she so chosen to be a lawyer in Ambassador Chinu Chase. No wonder her, her daughter was a good lawyer, the judge. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to argue and to argue on her feet and to advance reasonable arguments, even if you are not on our side, it's enviable. It's something that was inculcated into me. And uh, I was not over eager to become a member of parliament, to be honest. I, I would have loved to be there mm -hmm. and to serve the interests of the young people, but I was more eager to learn from these veterans, people who were just a pleasure to listen to. Yeah, yeah. And um, speaking of youth politics, uh, Nashi, the, um, as a matter of fact, not just youth politics, you, I'm sure you still hold strong views about political matters in the country or just the general situation in the country as much as you are no longer in that political space to sort of challenge for office and whatnot. Um, where did we go wrong? Um, there isn't a lot going well in this country at the moment. Um, we, we have seen the, the ruling party losing some votes uh, for two consecutive elections. And uh, we, we have a, a very divided opposition as we see now. I'm sure you are following from Opua where you are based. You are following the events in Vinduk, where as we speak tonight, there is actually no, uh, literally there's no leadership at the city of Vinduk. There is um, a coalition that is, that is not really gelling well. Uh, IPC recalling some of their people and whatnot. The quorum a week ago could not be met for a council meeting because of some of these things. Uh, how do we emerge out? How did we get here, and how do we emerge out of it? Uh, politics without principle is one of the greatest vices that there can be. Politics without principle. Uh, when you get into politics singularly because you want to be swapped, uh, it's it's it's. <laughs> You are not going, you're okay, fine, you beat it, you beat to a point, then what? And then you do what? I I have maintained, I would have expected an, a, a coalition in winter between the AR and the LPM, and probably NUTO, uh, if they could garner enough votes. Those would speak the same language. I just could not see how the AR would be able to speak the same language with the PDM and the IPC. The PTM and the IPC are ultra right wingers, in my respectful opinion. They are on the right of the political divide. They will not want land to be given just like that. They, they, uh, they are on the other side, uh, leftist revolutionaries who, who want land to be given to the people, to the masses. The two will never meet. The, mm. So the, that coalition was dead on arrival was dead on arrival and it's unfortunate uh, that uh, it has to come to that because uh, uh, our elected officials tend to forget that the primary reason they are in office is not for their egos is not for their singular political parties and political groupings hmm. but for the greater greater need of the people if there's a deadlock like that what should happen is not getting a coalition to defeat swap but looking at options where you negotiate the best possible deal for your constituents. Hmm. Uh, whoever you negotiate with, you put it down uh, and bind yourselves as councillors, as the leaders of, of, of the city. You bind yourself to, to, this, uh, to this plan that you have agreed on. And then walk towards bettering the, 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 the interests of the, of the people. But that is not what happened. You ask what's happening. Hmm. And that is where the, the nation has gone astray. Yeah. The politics is being done without principle. Uh, uh, today, we've got issues that people get criticized for being yourself or airing your views. You know, it's a, it's a whole a confusion that is going on in this country right now. And it's because it goes back when we stood up in 99, when those who stood up in 99, and formed the Congress of Democrats were speaking about 
the current situations, we could see that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Namibia is on the wrong track or on the wrong track. Mm. And people were supporting others because of their cousins, their uncles, and whatever. But the greater Namibian nation was forgotten then. I, I, I'm happy that even though 20 years later, the people have actually realized that we have, as a people, they have realized that Namibia is on the wrong track. But after having done that, you find every second opportunist who does not have any bone of principle and understanding of politics and the law and everything contesting for parliament and populism taking over and everybody's there in parliament. My senior Leonard Koleki, uh, uh, Mr. Norman Chombe, spoke about the mediocrity in parliament. Mm. People are going to run on the streets very soon on, about the appointment of, of Mr. No. But the people in parliament should know that they should amend the, the laws inside there. They don't even comprehend what's going on in there. Mm. But it's the people we have inside there. And the consequence, the ultimate result of those is, is, is that we're going to have mediocrity. And accept mediocrity as, as fine. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality. We are having politicians who lack the most basic bone of principle in this country. Now, one of the things that we are starting <clears throat> to learn, uh, and it's a new ph phenomenon now in Namibia, is of course, after last year's elections, uh, the regional and uh, local authority elections, we have seen the opposition taking over some constitu constituencies and some local authorities like Windu, Swakop, Monvavis Bay, and the whole of the south, essentially, with the exception of uh, Oranyamund, I think, and <coughs> maybe to some extent, um, Ludretz. Um, what we are starting to see now is that, dif is that leadership is not as easy as it has always looked from far away. Um, we haven't, I mean, Windu is one point in case, uh, one case in point, rather. Um, but there are other problems elsewhere in the country where the opposition is ruling. Do you think this is a good opportunity now for Namibians to see uh, more clear, clearly who to vote for in 2025? I mean, uh, uh, you, the opposition had a chance to show that they can do better. Swapo have had the chance all along to show that they can do better. But uh, there seems to be that situation where nobody's really excelling. I think, if anyone, in my opinion, that I think is doing quite well is the is the lady, the, the councillor of Sokopmund uh, constituency, uh, Siska, Siska Howard Smith, I think that's her name. But elsewhere, there isn't really anything that you can say that is a proper radical departure from the status quo that has always been there. Um, does that give us a, a better preparation for 2024, for example, and, and the subsequent year where the similar elections will be held? I, I, I hoped it would. I hoped it would all along. I hoped it would. Uh, but then the, the situation is it's unfortunate. You need to, to think outside the box, especially when you've got a, a crooked regime like the Swapo regime in power, who will uh, try by all means to ensure that you don't get your ball rolling as, as, as a regional councillor or uh, as a town council. But you have to get out there and you have to think outside the box. You have to mobilize, you should realize that the people, you are regional councillor or you are in charge of a town because the people of those towns support you. As much as central government might need to get you money for you to carry out some projects, mm. let the people see where you are governing that you are committed to people's development. I, for one, would want to see a, every regional councillor, regardless of the party they come from, set up a community development fund where they source the funds from the members of the community. Let the community own their regional councillors because that is what the regional councillors should be, the servant of the community. Mm. Give a portion of your salary because you get paid because people voted for you in the first place. Give it for development uh, of, of that community. Start it yourself. And then let's see, a moment you do that, the moment you do that, I was listening to, uh, today, this morning, in Omurari FM, I was listening to the regional council of the poor urban constituency. 
and the initiatives that he is undertaking. And I was like, I'm impressed by this young man and what he's trying to do. It's people like that that I would want to go visit in the office for coffee and offer my help wherever I can as a Namibian citizen. Obviously not as a PDM. I'll never be a PDM. They're too much on the right. But here is a councillor who is trying, regardless of the impediments, who is trying to revive the agricultural projects that have been dormant and other projects that have been dormant with the help of the people here themselves. Uh, so there are people actually who, uh, who are trying to do my, uh, things differently. But unfortunately, most most of the councillors, as far as I'm concerned, and my apologies, maybe if they have done things that I have not had, are just trying to become what I have always been all along. Hmm. You see, some of them are even getting land. Imagine if this councillor is alleged to have gotten land in the record time. People in winter don't have land. Hmm. Nobody cares about them. The moment you get into office, you forget completely where you come from. It's sad, but then uh, Namibians should not be ashamed of voting people out of office. Namibians, the electorate, the electorate does not owe any anybody any sense of a, of a vote. If they don't serve you, you don't vote for them. Simple as that. Indeed. The, the final question to you briefly, also if you can summarize it quite briefly uh, in the interest of time, uh, Nashi is... There has always been this uh, generational conflict, you know, people saying, oh, we need young people to assume leadership in the country in different stratas of government and whatnot, because all people are tired and whatnot. But we have seen uh, in recent years that, um, or well, at least some of us, that age is not enough just to say, I think it's, it's okay to say, look, you are older now, uh, let's have that sort of succession so that we don't have a crisis when the older people are no longer here. But age alone hasn't proven yet that uh, if you are younger, you are automatically already better than the older, the older people in, in leadership. I mean, you spoke about having been with the likes of Ulenga and whatnot. Uh, and just because Ulenga was older than you didn't make you necessarily a better leader. I, I'm, I'm just using you as an example, but give me a no. comment on, on the, this generational conflict uh, to say, is it just automatic that if you are young somehow, maybe because of your energy and everything, that you are better than the, the older people? You know what, uh, what we have as younger people is the energy. Yeah. What uh, the greater people have is the experience and sometimes the energy also. Uh, why people are com complaining about the old people is because we have the wrong old people in office. And it's hypocritic when what, what's going on. You know, when uh, we all speak about voting for the young people, voting for the young people. But in, uh, two years ago, in the national elections, we had two young people running for presidency, uh, Venani and Swartboy. Honorables. Uh, I'm used to them. But Honorable Venani and Honorable Swartboy. And we didn't campaign for them. Mm -hmm. uh, some people did not campaign for them. The vanguards, the biggest uh, uh, pro protagon pro 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 protagonist of, of biggest advocates of youth empowerment, went to support Itula, Dr. Itula. I'm not saying it's wrong to support Dr. Itula, but if you are supporting uh, young people deliberately, you should be deliberate. In supporting the youngest possible candidate there is mm. but that is not what happened and I'm, i i can tell you with certainty today we read many things and one day dr lipetina madila spoke about what the young people did when they were given the swap of party to run mm. uh, there are young people currently in custody trial awaiting on the biggest corruption scandal this nation has, has had it's an, they are young some of them had the ultimate positions of power. Mm. They did nothing to advance the interest of the youth. Or maybe by the youth they meant themselves, lining themselves up nicely. But they did nothing. They did completely nothing. So I don't think, I don't think he, 
they all because you are younger you are obviously bad i think the problem is that we have developed a tradition of appointing wrong people in positions of power and these people do not serve the nation and the young people are the recipients of the poorest of services and the young people then get angry and say you are not looking at us mm. and then we want to take over ourselves because you are you are not looking at us but it is a everything that is happening in this country today is because we completely have accepted for the first 10 20 years that mediocrity is the it, it, it's a norm and now the young people want to the young people simply don't trust the older politicians it's unfortunate i do not believe for a moment i was speaking to the, the swanu chairperson uh, uh, the other time and i told him oh you look young you've got another 20 years to live he's 60. a brilliant fellow who can be, become minister of higher education or youth or anything and has the youth at heart but then you 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 won't appoint we don't appoint competence in namibia that angers young people and young people believe they're on their own and if they're on their own then they ought to 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 to, re, to revolt and take take charge themselves it all boils down to the deliberate mismanagement of our resources the deliberate exclusion of the young people from the mainstream they are simply revolting because they don't feel part of the system but it does not make them any better i can tell you every time we, uh, our mates are arrested for corruption and all these bad things being younger does not make you better in any way but it gives you more energy i just hope those in power uh, will realize that appointing a person with competence will will eventually lead to confidence mm. in the greater public involving the including but not limited to the young people and this generational fight will wither away when the right people are in office indeed uh nashi thank you very much for your time uh, we really appreciate uh, having you on the show tonight it's always my pleasure my brother yes that's uh Nashi Shirera, he is uh, a former leader of the Young Democrats, which was the youth league of the Congress of Democrats when it was the Congress of Democrats. Thank you for watching.